Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. Spoiler alert! Torture, betrayal, murder, and death all come to this episode. The Mirror Universe scenario plays out from last week. Giorgio gets weighed, Saru can body slam you off the ceiling, and Mystery Man Carl turns out to be quite the throwback Trek reference. These lights on the inside look a lot better than they did on the outside of this ship. It's, oh, cool. Wait, the light's on. Hey, we're here at Starfleet Underground. So welcome back to us here. Depending upon when you're listening to us, good day, good morning, or good evening. Um, we're here with our full compliment. We don't have a guest today, but we're planning on getting one soon. We just got clearance for it. Uh, they're on clearance uh, after Christmas. Yes. In fact, we're actually getting a lot more um, leeway since Patrick has been seeing his HR contact. So I don't know what went on the other night, but it sounded like it was a Kentucky Derby in there. <laughs> a lot of neighing and a lot of dumping, what sounded like galloping. <laughs> I had. We were playing horsey. <laughs> no, I, I just, it's like something's like. I'm your thoroughbred. I want you to ride me hard and put me away wet. It's like, what? Oh, my. So I stay away from his room from that. All I heard was coming up to the big finish. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So that was wild. Um, In case this is your first time listening to the show, shame on you. It was a photo finish. (laughs) (laughs) They were microseconds away from finishing at the same time. Uh. That explains the clicks. If this is your first time listening to this show, shame on you. You should have been listening to us for a long time now, because if this is your first episode, you have no idea what to expect. And it's it, it's not pleasant. So You don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> also, no. welcome. Welcome. Yes, welcome aboard to let you know before we get started on intros. This show is definitely rated above 17. So if you get little kids right now, um, this is the only time I'm going to ask you to get them close to the radio. All right. Make over to the speaker or to however you're listening. Get them close. All right. Are they nearby? Get out of here. Don't listen. Go away. Go to your room. Now that we've gotten that done, I'm Captain Nathan Adams aboard this ship here. And I have our prestigious science officer. I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer. And it's a good thing you told those kids to leave the room because, oh, my God, they do not want to see these two triples humping each other. It's not good. It looks like Patrick's balls when he walks around naked. So speaking (laughs) of Patrick walking naked, Patrick, I'm got clothes on. Finally. Finally. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm I am the interspecies liaison. (laughs) I'm number one. I'm the computer guy. I'm all around. Awesome. And of course, we have, again, I got to say this because I am extremely proud of the work he's done. We have the winner of the O'Brien Award for this year, our illustrious engineer. I demand a recount. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Oh, hi, guys. I'm Rocky. Said recount. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's my cue. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Cue ball. Making a, a count joke. I, I apologize. So no worries. I'm glad that everybody is here. This show is being brought to you by Section 31. So I got to get that out of the way because they get highly agitated when we don't let them know. So first off, do we have any corrections or anything for this? I do time? not believe anything came through subspace, but let me check one more time real quick here. And I do not see anything. So apparently we were flawless. We keep being flawless. Yay. That is so cool. I'm really, really happy about that. Next is going to be our news. What is the news of the galaxy here, Heather? So I got some interesting news for you guys. Uh, some information on season two of Lower Decks. They expect season two of Lower Decks to come out in 2021. And they had an interview with Mike, the man. And he said... Quote, I can tell you right now that we are so deep in production. Not only is it all written, but I've got episode 209 to watch this week in animated form. And we've already sent the first four episodes to color. So we are just buzzing along. Another thing he wanted to say. I know, right? Another thing he wanted to say is in the next season, we are going to know more about Tendi, about Rutherford. In this season coming up, they're going to be more like the main characters instead of Mariner and 
and Boimler. So it's going to feel like having four leads as opposed to two leads and two sidekicks. So there's a lot less Boimler and Mariner and more Tendi and Rutherford. Oh, how cool. Well, that makes sense because Boimler's on the Titan, right? Right. And they're going to uh, show that too. They're going to show him on the Titan for a while. It's not a one episode thing. Mm. Oh, that means that we're going to get a chance to see William Frakes again. Well, not see, but hear yes. William Frakes again, which is going to be awesome. I like that direction. Squee. William Riker, I think, is what you meant to say. Jonathan yeah. Frakes, William Riker. It was, it, it, was, it was just buzzing me in the head a little bit. I was like, wait, that just, it didn't sound exactly right. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I blame the coffee because um, I trusted Heather this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I tried one of those chocolate bombs and um, let's just say there wasn't marshmallows in the middle. Oh, great. Mm, I'm not going to go there. No, I'm not. <laughs> Next news. Do you have any news for us, Patrick, other than we have now favors from HR? Yes. So Star Trek Picard season one will be available on Blu-ray, DVD, Steelbook and or digital download on January 25th of 2021. Outstanding. Cool. Outstanding. Then they could watch it over and over and over again. And for you guys out there that said, I am never going to pay for CBS Access. Well, now you can pay for the Blu-ray and get the experience at home. <laughs> so that would be cool. I wonder if they're going to have behind the scenes and um, bloopers and whatnot. That would be cool. I would imagine so. Oh, yeah. 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 Behind the scenes. Usually there's chock full of stuff. Yeah. But I wonder, because of this pandemic, like they did with um, Discovery Season 1, how they're airing it on the CBS um, I hope so. broadcast station. Maybe maybe they'll air Picard Season 1 on broadcast. Fingers crossed. But they'll have to censor the swear words, right? Yeah, they would. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> And about you, Rocky, you get any news? I was getting news from Mike, the man himself again. He's sharing the good word that all 10 episodes of season one of Star Trek Lower Decks is coming out for the rest of the world on January 22nd to Amazon Prime Video in Australia, New Zealand, what? Europe, Japan, India, and much, much more. So if you've been bitching and moaning, and they are bitching and moaning on Twitter, I've seen them, about not being able to actually see Lower Decks where you live, because for some reason we have to delay it for the rest of the world. We do not understand the reasoning behind all this because it's 2020 what now? And we're still delaying releasing something from America to the rest of the world. It doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever in the world of the Internet. Wow, that is weird. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's official January 22nd. Now that we've completely spoiled it all, they can listen to it. Uh or <laughs> listen to listen, watch it uh <laughs> now they can understand what we were talking about <laughs> yeah well maybe we'll get so many more listeners it's like listen to us now that it comes out you can listen to the you know yeah. listen to us about the shows that you can watch now finally and then once you watch it do yourself a favor go back to our earlier podcasts and listen to our reviews of the show it's just like if you discovered us all over again you can sit and go now this makes sense now i understand when patrick says he's boring boring now i get it so go ahead and watch <laughs> Oh, you can do the same thing for <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh I thought yikes. he left already. That sounded like somebody had to clean the filters. Oh no. <laughs> he had left oh, there. Gross. <laughs> Filters were a little dirty. Oh, yikes! TMI. Um, yeah. No. Also, though, uh, Star Trek Picard. If you're getting that out in the next uh, couple of days, if you haven't seen it yet, you can. Well, they, that released kind of quickly, though, compared to Lower Decks, right? Because they were mm -hmm. world premiering that thing like at the same time. Did that come out at the same time? No. no. Picard came out first. Oh, no. Yeah, Picard came out like early last year, and then Lower Decks came out like in August. Yeah. Yeah. So well, Lower, anyway. Decks, Lower Decks is, is coming out a lot faster than Picard did on. On. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, you can go back and listen to our old episodes. You just got to figure out which one you're sync up with, and then once you get in sync with the release dates, it's all it's all fun and games. Well, on the thumbnail, it should help because on our thumbnail we have like what episode we're talking about. If you go too far back, we don't have that. But I started doing. That. If you go so far back, you see a sock on the holodeck. That means you're right <laughs> at the beginning. That's still one of my favorite it episodes. Means don't don't enter the holodeck because. <laughs> <laughs> That Somebody was fun. doing something. Oh. Patrick is, is testing the filters. <laughs> <laughs> you notice we're act actually at show 50, guys. I don't know if you've been counting yes. along with us. We're actually hitting oh, show 50 so right now. This is show number 50. It's amazing. Happy, happy milestone. Yeah. Happy milestone to everybody. Well, it's 50 for you guys. It's not quite as many for me. I don't, I, I'm trying to think. I, I started on June 13th, so. You're like um, 25 episodes in? 
I don't know. Um, it's okay. Dave, You're allowed to party right. just along with us just because yes. you're on for the ride. It's all good. Well, just just <laughs> when we walk down the corridor, bow to us because we're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's all. No, if I bow, bow, it's because I don't want to look at your ugly mug. You don't need to bow before <laughs> me, sir. <laughs> and here I thought he was actually just giving him a blowjob, not bowing. <laughs> yeah, well, he does that too. So. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> You, know. you wish <laughs> he has to bow because he's so tall he can't come in at crotch height so that's why there you go okay well i have news for those of you who remember star trek they always have when somebody's unconscious they say we get to get the cortical stimulator cortical stimulator is supposed to be able to, to stimulate the cortical part of the brain in order to bring someone back from being unconscious it was always the thing they did in next generation well there's news apparently science is just about ready to make that a reality. They've tested it once on somebody who was a coma patient and reportedly it actually brought them out of a coma. So it's going to be a ultrasound transducer, which is going to focus ultrasound waves into a precise target in the brain. And it's a magnetic resonance machine. It's going to be used to precisely target the ultrasound waves. So we're getting closer and closer. Hey, Frankenfurter used a transducer. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't a cortical one. But it, it was, just, don't, you don't, don't be messing with them transducers. Producers, man, that'll turn you into a transvestite from Transylvania. Yeah, and then you'll walk around with a banana on your head. Is that what happened to Tim Curry? You're all listening yes. to us through a transducer. Yes. Just want you to know, you know that. It's everything you're listening to is coming at you through a transducer. And then, yes, and remember... Because of that, you give yourself over to absolute pleasure. Swim the warm waters of sins of the flesh. Erotic nightmares beyond any measure. And sensual daydreams to treasure. Okay, I'm going to barf. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just feel it? Oh, no, my. I don't want to. No, not when you say that. I don't want to feel it. When you say it, I want to take a long, hot shower. Like, just hot soap hot soap and hot water and not a cold shower no (laughs) a hot throbbing shower i want to get this the slimy feeling off me (laughs) (laughs) that's not what you said the other night to that hr guy so well that's different that's him that's not you Oh, (laughs) we're going to go ahead and get ready to get started because not only this is a 50th episode, this is going to be the last episode you hear before Christmas and holidays. So make sure that you give us a a good listen in. Happy holidays to everybody. Happy Yuletide. Yeah. Happy Yuletide. Happy Christmas. Happy. 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 Joy. Joy. Merry Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa and Festivus for the rest of us. No. That that was funny. That rhymed. Uh. Well, that's the whole thing from from Seinfeld was Festivus for the rest of us. I'm giving you a hard time. Mr. Sarcasm over there. Right. Uh, Hello. HR didn't do a good job if you're still giving hard times. All right. We're going to go over to to Heather. It's your turn now. Okay. So we start with this episode. We are talking about Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 10, Terra Firma Part 2. We get a Part 2 this time. It first aired Thursday, December 17th, 2020. Teaser. Break her. Mira Michael is dragged to the brig as she begs for death, but she gets to agonize her instead. Before being thrown in, they engage in a lovely mother-daughter spat where Giorgio tries to give her some wise advice on ruling a kingdom, but Michael is a tad pissed and spits in her face as a response. Later in the captain's quarters, Giorgio orders Killy to break Michael, giving her free reign on torturing the crap out of her. Once broken, they'll use her to kill all of her co-conspirators, and they'll show the crew that the Emperor is still strong while keeping Michael alive and hopefully changing the future. Okay, before we jump jump into it did anyone notice the credits uh, <laughs> i was going to mention that when we get to the credits i didn't see that i looked they for were it in but negative. i didn't see okay, it yeah the the open of the show was in, inverse negative and it was upside down uh, yeah. i love that they did that because every time we get into the mirror universe well not every time because it's not we don't often get a two parter mirror episode so but when they did it with the enterprise they completely redid the entire open when they had their mirror universe show and it was awesome. They even had alternate music for it. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty cool looking. I was, I was enjoying it. Yeah. So it was nice to see them do a little touch to this one. It wasn't quite redoing the entire open, but it was, uh, it was a nice touch. I'm going to have to watch that part again. Cause it looks like I totally glazed over that. Yeah. I usually skipped the intro and didn't even realize. 
so I'm gonna have to watch it again. It gives me something to look after we finish the mission today. That's pretty cool. It was definitely to see Michael Burnham to be so evil in that respect to turn around and just like spit in Georgia's face. Oh, that was her. a spit take. Oh my! <laughs> but off <God>. um. <laughs> the evilness have you ever done that to somebody that they're really insulting you and they're all up in your face and just like spit right in a fa- i i've never gotten a chance to do that but it's it's like i want to now it was yeah it's really a high end of the insult actually the spit is something that was done from all the way back in roman empire it has its significance when someone is extremely scared the saliva in their mouth dries up so there you hear the phrase that um that person was scared spitless and that's the reason oh. why so when a person spits in someone's face, it's not only an act of defiance, it's a way to show them I'm, I'm not scared of you. Oh. I've never actually heard the phrase said that way. That's very yeah, fascinating. I always thought it was shitless. <laughs> no, that's, that means something different. You know, you can look it up. It, it's a, That's a phrase. That, that's the reason why. But you can cool. see, again, it just proves how much that Giorgio loves her. Like a mm. daughter, she took that without beating the crap out of her. Mm-hmm. Well, did you guys notice that there was a very... Very famous quote in this in this opening. Which quote did you hear? So when Giorgio says, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. Do you know what that's from? No. What? It, it's from Star Trek Discovery. No. <laughs> Terra Firma good, Part good, 2. I got it written down right here. Good, good guess, but not quite. It's, it's from the um, acclaimed mm-hmm. author Victor Hugo. It's Jean Valjean from Les Miserables. Oh, wow. oh, very artsy. The theater people are rolling around in their chairs like, Rocky, how did you not know that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, pretty I, cool. I heard I heard it and I was like, wait a minute. Something like rang in my head. It triggered. I'm like, I, yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking it up. And I'm like, oh, that's where I know it from. OK. It's a good quote, especially with right now with what everyone in the world is going through. That's a mm-hmm. good quote for everyone. Very inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, and every time we go to the Star Trek Mary Universe, it reminds me of the old phrase of nature versus nurture. Mm. You have a chance to see Tilly who everybody loves on the ship. It's just so diabolically enjoy torture and being evil that that side of her has been nurtured to come out. It's just like, you're the best torturer in the whole, in the, whole the galaxy. And she's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so she, she's like, well, I do have to be given free reign. Yeah, well, you know, got to do the job, got to do it right, right? <laughs> That's so funny. You know? Why is he still didn't. using oxygen on my ship? I yes. mean, it's like, hello. And the way she said it all, like super sickening, sweet. Like you could tell when she's pissed off, when she gets like really super sweet. I love Captain Killy so much. The only mm-hmm. thing she didn't do when she was torturing was to do a little hand clap because she enjoyed it so much. I expected <laughs> her to do the little. <laughs> oh my God. And the faces she was giving. I love oh. her faces. Oh my God. They are so funny. Why? I'm jumping ahead just a little bit here, but when Kelly says something, she goes, you can stay in there all night or whatever. And Michael says, rotten hell, bitch. And the, <laughs> the pouty look on Tilly's yes. face. She's just like, oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> no, <laughs> bitch. Oh, it's classic, her. man. That, this kudos to her as an actor. I yeah. swear. Really good. Okay, I guess we finished the intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other the other good quote that I liked was um, when Giorgio said, why do they only learn from pain? Yeah, it was a big part of this whole episode is how can I I'm trying to communicate with you. I'm trying to tell you exactly my intentions. This is what I, I mean. I mean, if I could just communicate with you clearly and exactly and I can't, I, well, I have to pain you but out of it. You know, even even Michael answered that question for her. She's like, you raised me to be this way. Exactly. You, know, you created me. Yeah. And most people do not learn from their successes. You you really only learn from when, when you fail, because mm-hmm. if, and if you succeeded in something, you don't go back and look at it and say, okay, what did I do wrong here? You know, right. Cause like, you succeeded. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but if you fail at something, you go, you, you know, if you, well, not all humans, to, yeah, not all humans, but <laughs> you know, people who are introspective will go back and say, okay, what did I, where did I go wrong here? So it, it, it's true. It's you only learn from failure, from pain, from hurt. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, learn from doing it. If yeah. you want to be philosophy about it, there is a whole section of philosophy that everything in life, everything is motivated by pain. You're in a relationship because of the pain of being alone. You want to please people because of the pain of being a disappointment. There's, there's, there's a whole big thing that how we're motivated as, as creatures is pain and not through love. If you want an animal to do something, it's through pain. But unfortunately, I'm glad that philosophy is not everywhere, but that's just one aspect where somebody believes that to be the prime motivator on why everything we do. There's there's a yin and a yang to it. Yes. There yeah, is. because because Definitely. I I'd rather be alone than be in a relationship. You know, well, that's not what happened last night. So <laughs> no, that, that's a booty call. That is not a relationship. That's a difference. <laughs> Sometimes it's just a booty call. I mean, you know, yeah, being in a relationship is harder. It's more taxing. And yeah, I would just rather not have to do it. Plus, you know, I'm sorry. If we're in a relationship and you want the fucking remote control to the TV, <laughs> bye, bitch. <laughs> oh, hell no. Oh, you and I would not get along. No. Oh, uh, 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 that's, that that's, that's, mine. that's a whole other <laughs> issue to the, you know, remote control control. I mean, that come on. That totally. completely explains you and Rocky's uh, fights in the, the mess lounge and everything between the TV. And that explains why when we walk in and they're both there, Janet Jackson's control is being played at top mm. volume. And I thought it was only true in discovery control. Apparently not. <laughs> it is Patrick and Rocky's fight song. <laughs> Okay, act one, betrayal. As the days pass, Killy happily tortures Michael while forcing her body to stay alive. But her mother is there for her as we see a tender scene where Giorgio talks about Michael's night terrors as a child and the field of fireflies that she would sleepwalk to. Eventually, Michael gives in and surrenders to her mother's will, but she will be only let back in if she kills all of the co-conspiracists that followed her during the coup. After Michael succeeds in killing all of the traitors, including Detmir, the next task is to find Lorca. Later that night, when Giorgio and Saru are in their private changer, chain, changers? Chamber. Chambers? Chambers, thank you. <laughs> He warns her that the Vihar has started and it's time to be killed or called. Bullshit, she replies as she explains that the Vihar is really something that he can actually live through and something that will make him stronger. Surprisingly, Giorgio tells him about the starship captain she once knew who experienced it and survived and his name was Saru. It's called Vihari? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I butcher just, all words. Just, I can't, you know, just putting it out there just in case people were like, she didn't. No, that was wrong. You know, I that butcher way we, we corrected words. our auto. We auto corrected ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes autocorrect is broken. <laughs> Tell me about it. The thing I thought was kind of uh, goes back to torture is that Tilly Killy stood there, waited for Michael to close her eyes and sleep, and then hit that obnoxious alarm. <laughs> to make sure. It's just part of the part of the full, you know, ride in the agonizer. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, I'm giving you the full feature. <laughs> so that was pretty wild. And for her, that was a touching scene between Giorgio and Michael. For her, while she's pretending to be asleep, yeah. about the story about the fireflies. There's a whole lot of great quotes in this episode. Like when she says, I, you know, I was sad when you're, when you outgrew your night terrors. Yeah. That's a double edged sword. It's like, okay. Great that you know you're you outgrew your night terrors, but to be sad that you outgrew them, what? Well, it is well, they the couldn't universe. help. You know that. Well, that's the other thing. That's kind of a, a mother thing, isn't it? It's like uh, I'm not, I'm I'm here to help you, and all of a sudden you don't need my help. That's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. so it's it's also to the point where she had a night terrors, but she walked out to the stars. So the terror wasn't the fact that she enjoyed that. She enjoyed the aftermath, which is a sitting with her daughter mm -hmm. underneath the stars, looking at the fireflies. Yeah, you know. So that part she enjoyed. And I love to watch Firefly. That was such a good show. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Damn you, Fox. But it's assumed that after the terrors is that moment. So if she doesn't have night terrors. They don't have that moment standing with the fireflies anymore. So I think that was cool. Yeah, you get that serenity when you watch the Firefly. Yeah, yeah. but then she said after that, you know, now that I think about it, maybe you didn't outgrow your night terrors. No, it made it or made it really endearing. Endearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that was a bad choice. To do. <laughs> oh my god! I you know. endearing, not a dear. I'm that so glad cool. I'm not meant, the only one. That was almost as good as a slice of bread that we saw. Oh man! 
you know, oh yeah, that's that. Was that this section? That's the section. Wow. Yeah, she got the slice the of bread after the after the firefly Come incident. Come on, Nathan, pick it, it up. It made her. It made her feel good because it was a wonder bread. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hey, I don't want you guys to be the only ones with painful words. That was much thicker than Wonder Bread, trust me. Oh, man. And then uh, the whole time she's in the cell, she's waiting for Lorca to save her. And Lorca, like, ghosts her when she needs him the most, you know? Transporter. He's probably the transporter thing happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, to be Burnham's character in this moment, it's, you know, you've got to endure the the torture and it's you know literally the worst thing they could do to you is toss you in the agonizer forever and she's got to play the long game and quite the long game that they're playing on this but they're both playing it although the manipulativeness of the Terran universe always blows my mind and to be at this point in time Burnham's by herself and she's isolated even she got a little visit from Detmer but she's still kind of you know pretty much on her own well I like the line we must leave behind all of that which destroys us mm-hmm. yeah and then you see again Giorgio's watching the whole time anybody who visits anything the, that's going on she's watching she's got the the, she's got the tantalus thing on the tantalus field yeah wait are we talking <laughs> about sex that, no no no, no. Oh. the tantalus field it allows allows her through watching do they actually have that in this or is it yeah, kind yeah, of assumed yeah, because we watch we remember if you remember back to the original series mirror episode they had the tantalus field that spock could have used that was in captain kirk's quarters to suddenly take you know a push of a button and you just destroy somebody and you can rule the world no because Till, Tilly says you you, ha- you have the ability to end her with what yeah. with a push of a button yeah it, 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 they didn't I, I don't know if they actually came out and said we've got the tantalus no, thing say, right here they didn't no. say it was a tantalus but, feel but it was implied yeah it definitely was implied oh my god okay wait before we go on if the, I hear you guys say tantalus one more time and I don't know what I'm what is that sex position that starts with T-A-N tantric tantric thank you tantric okay now we can move on now that I have <laughs> I'm sure okay. there's some videos we can show you later. <laughs> no, ta- it's it's not a position. Tantric sex is a whole. Yeah, it's a whole. It's a whole thing. thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, you want to talk about the long game? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm talking. Long game. Long game. <laughs> It's not just a long game. It's a long, deep game. <laughs> it's long, deep, and sometimes hard. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, With hopefully. Pen- <laughs> yes. Something that can penetrate your consciousness. So. Oh. <laughs> In all of the best uh, ways. Uh, you know, so thank, God, thank God we're not regulated by the FCC. <laughs> <laughs> or HR. I don't think we said anything that, you know, you'd have to censor. Uh, uh, they'd be like, not for children under 13. Totally. <laughs> or 15 or 17. <laughs> but yeah, so the Tantalus field, you know, they didn't talk about it. But yeah, I, I, it's very easy for the emperor to just go click, done. But that's not what she's trying to do. Yeah. No, she wants to. She wants to redeem Michael because the thing she kept seeing is like, I see what you can become. I see another way. I see what this this galaxy can be. This universe can be. So I thought it was pretty pretty cool. The sadness in Giorgio knowing from so like you've got the old emperor Giorgio who is ruthless and, and cruel and, and had no feelings whatsoever, and then you've got this Giorgio who has spent the last three years with the with the crew of the Discovery and has slowly been changed by them, whether she realizes it or not. And then she comes back here and, and she's like, you can just feel how it's tearing her apart that she has that she can't change what's in front of her. Well, you, you know? could see how different she is now, how much she's changed compared to the mirror universe. Like we can't see it in the prime universe, but when you put her back in the mirror universe, it's like, oh my God, she's really changed. Mm-hmm. She, has, she has, and the, the amount of effort she took to try to bring Michael back to her mm-hmm. is was really something. Even the rest of the crew was like, you know, or is she's really being this weak? But I would equip like if you have your best knife, your best weapon and get a nick in it, you wouldn't throw it away. You try to, to salvage it. And I think that's basically she should have came at that angle. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a um, killer right off the Yeah, it's like a play that's not in her playbook that she's using that they've never seen before. Yeah. Well that's like yeah. Saru set Saru tells her you know, she, he's like, um, I don't, who are you? You're not Taryn, you know? And then he's going on saying that, you know, she's like, well, you're going to stay with me. He's like, no, I can't because of her is coming. But she says, my corpse would already be eaten to bones if I could not 
accurately judge between loyalty and flattery. I really like that scene between her and Saru. Yeah. I really loved what they did. And Saru, you know, when he realizes that, he's like, oh, my God, you are placing a really great deal of trust in me. Holy shit. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was like, whoa. But he realizes, like, who are you? Because, you know, no mm -hmm. no Terran person knows about Viharai, you know. But yeah. it shows that the constant between the two universes was Saru. Saru was basically the same in both places. He was still his personality. Initially, yes. I'd be curious yeah. to see what happens to Saru later on in the mirror universe. Because with Viharai, that Kelpian is a badass in, well, Carl, in the regular universe. Did you so see what in you the did mirror side. Well, hey, that's earlier. That's later <laughs> i know we'll talk about it later definitely but carl does mention something about like what happened to saru after that so but yeah we'll talk about it in the next section carl. and then when they um when they kill all the co-conspirators oh. they killed landry, landry for like the third time how landry, many times right are they away. gonna kill her she is a professional death woman as in oh she gets God. killed all the time what the hell it's like i've Landry's already been killed alive. twice and Landry's then she comes alive. landry no landry died i read something on where did i read it? i swear to god i read something on like trekmovie.com where it said landry's still alive but didn't we see them Not, kill her even though she Not was every, shot even though she was shot that she's she's actually still alive not everyone's phaser is set to stun <laughs> in, well, the, in the mirror universe. I, I don't gave, think so. She gave Giorgio her tag like she died. Yeah, but I, I, I'll have to but try and see if I can find it. We're going to have to get to that in, in when we get to that section. But yeah, yeah. she did die well. <laughs> yeah. And the the so fascinating like, thing to me was Detmer. Detmer's mirror is uh, interesting to me because Detmer is such a badass in the prime universe. In this mm -hmm. universe, she's still a badass, but she's like motivated differently. She's got like, she's not mm. as aggressive. I think she's more of a good person in the mirror universe. Yeah. I, I mean, she really, I mean, she's actually, you know, she's, she's trying to be supportive to, to Burnham, even though it's really stupid Captain to go Burnham, out yeah. and, and say, Hey, I'm here for you. And here's what's going on. And don't you know that they're watching us right now? Is that like, you shouldn't be here. And like, it's mm -hmm. okay. Um, she's like taking risks for the wrong reasons. Yeah. That relationship seemed a little bit closer than friends. Yeah. And then it ended with a hell of a stab. I you know. know. So. <laughs> Was that, that was, was that the section? That's true. Was that the section? That was the section. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. yeah. And then when, when she finally comes up to the table and is like, did you do everything I wanted you to do? And mm -hmm. she's like, I'm going to make it rain. And she's like, <laughs> throw the badges out on the table. Oh, yeah. I got this badge. I got that badge. I got this yeah. badge. Oh, and I got all these I'm badges. I'm going to make it rain up in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, Georgie is like, that's not all the badges. Yeah, it's like, you're, uh, missing, you're one. missing one. <laughs> she's standing right next to you. <laughs> yeah, she's throwing the badges out. Like like dollars at a strip club. She's like <laughs> dollar dollar bills. And yo. Those yep. represent lives. And all she said was Michael. Yeah. Like she didn't even have to say you still have one person left to you know get rid of. It was just like Michael. Is that everyone? And with no emotion, no nothing. With no emotion, yeah. she just is like stabby stabby stabby, and it's like oh wow. And the look on her face too. Debner was like. Why? It's like, what did I do? I'm, I'm doing the good thing here. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm supporting you in all of this. And But I love you. <laughs> you serious? Yeah, it sucked. It really sucked for Detmer. Oh. It's like, come on, don't do that. We rubbed uglies. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, this is a mirror universe that exists within a, a portal. So who knows? Well, no. Lots it, of things can exist in a portal. Yeah. It actually happened, though, but we'll talk about it later. Oh, OK. Um, one more thing. The quote that Giorgio said, those silly democratic things are always on the brink of collapse. I thought <laughs> that was very poignant. Oh, my goodness. Mm. De democracy yeah. is fragile sometimes. Demo uh, it's always fragile. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Americans are just um, we take advantage of it is always going to be there, you know, is always being set in stone, whereas the rest of the world realizes how fragile democracies are. Well, if you look at how our democratic government right now has I treated know. the American people during this pandemic, it's it's shameful. It is. Um, I mean, it's absolutely gonna, shameful. It's very un Star Trek like. No, very un Star Trek like. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you do Space Force and the Guardians. And and, oh and we've got Operation Warp Drive. <laughs> wait, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, we don't. are going off track here. Don't yeah, even go track. there. <laughs> okay. But we're not going to talk about track. any of that stuff right now. We are <laughs> not the Guardians of the Galaxy people. Let's continue on. Okay, so continuing on. on. Yes, please. 
leaves. Okay, act two, double cross. Discovery detected a coded message sent to Lorca's number one and follows it to his janky ass ship. He is easily captured, seeing as the damn thing is always falling apart. Instead of interrogating him, Michael kills Duggan on the spot and stages a second coup. Stubborn, just like her mother. An epic fight scene occurs, and at the end, Michael and Giorgio end up stabbing each other before bleeding out and passing away. That whole thing where she bows to her mom, she does everything to show. And then when them, their, that other guy came up on the on the ship, he wasn't going to tell anybody anything. And before she, he could even say anything, she kills him to keep him mm-hmm. from talking. You know, so. Well, it didn't and, matter yeah. anyway. But yeah, it was, she was no. just advancing the next step. It's like, now I got everybody here and they're not expecting it. But Giorgio's not stupid, man. No. no. And she's got her backup coming, too. That was, yeah. that was amazing that, like, you know, this. This is the long game that we're playing in this big giant double cross. It's it, it, she's it, like, I, I and don't Michael, really like, you should never have trusted me. And she's like, she goes, I never did. Not like I wanted to. Yeah, because she knew in the back of her mind that something was right. A mother knows her child. And she's like, yeah, this seems like it's good, but it still might be something going on here. But the look on everybody's face when all the Kelpian came to help. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kelpians it's came like, in with a force. So that was awesome. like body what? slammed Culver. Oh my god! Bounced him off the was, ceiling. Drew was like a WWE fighter. <laughs> Yeah, they all like, smash yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. That's like a Kelpian and Varar. That's why they've been calling them this whole time. They're fucking yeah. dangerous motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. The whole time you see them, they're like, what are you going to do when the Saru slam comes for you? <laughs> Can you smell what the Saru's cooking? Can you feel the ganglia? I mean, come on. Seriously. Can you smell the Vaharai? <laughs> oh my God. Kelpians are badass. And I love that, you know, for the point of view, of Giorgio, I'm, I know she's thinking. I just get get a couple of these uh, Varahide uh, Kelpians on my team, and we got it going on here. We, we'll be unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. And, and it really was. And then you had the separate fight that happened just between her and Michael. It's like it was a continuation of the fight they had in the earlier episode where uh, Giorgio was in the training room, mm-hmm. and she went. They were still on together. Yeah. The, the right, interesting right, thing, right. if you watch the ready room afterward, where she's talking to oh. Eaton, she's talking about how the coordination of the choreography of the fight and how she's all defensive in this scene mm-hmm. um, and if you remember back the, who was on the defensive in the other scene when she's in the gym and she's throwing the knife in the wall she was all aggressive so it's yeah. um, it's it's the interesting balance she didn't want to kill him. well you know what, what really got me though was before the fighting started and you know, Michael pulls the phaser on her and she's like all of it was a lie then the hurt in her voice was just I mean it was so palpable yeah yeah it was she was hoping that you know she had changed history and she wasn't going to have to kill her daughter and they would be able to rule together and she was wrong ruined her storybook ending i mean right it must have been a really bad internal struggle though because she's from the mirror universe so if her daughter overthrew her and killed her just like she was telling the prime michael she would have been honored like that would have been she would have been proud of her daughter for doing that you know Mm -hmm. but she's been she's been in the prime universe with discovery for for three years Mm -hmm. i'm sorry you can't no matter how hardened of a a moron you are you cannot be not changed by being in completely different circumstances to what you're used to it's just you you just can't i think what happened is that at that moment she realized that the michael she wanted was the michael she had in the prime universe Mm. Yep. she wanted that michael to turn more and then she realized at that moment i i had that michael And that's so funny, too, because every time she was with the Prime Universe Michael, she would compare her to the Mirror Universe Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my Michael wouldn't have done that, Mm -hmm. you know. So it was really the the fight scene when she stabs her. The look of pain in her face is like, like, wow. And then Michael gets her lick in and stabbed her in the neck. And it's like, oh, ow, that's that's a really bad angle. So they ended up killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. So in each other's in each other's arms, basically, you know, but yeah. still the look on everybody's face. I still just revel in the fact that how when all the Kelpians came in like the Calvary. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I also like the uh, Tilly was having her battle out. She did the stab and then shot with the phaser headshot. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. That was some vicious. I mean, the, the way Terrans fight, it's all about physical, but they still got the phasers on them. It's like, we would just pull out the phaser and be done, like click and done, you know, that's it. But no, they've got to do this whole battle hand to hand. Yeah. And then Tilly was still loyal. She was still loyal to the end. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. And do you think Killy knew that they were going to try a second coup when they went to go to Duggan? Because she oh, said yeah. to the the emperor like don't worry about this me and michael we'll go do this you stay here you don't have to come with us you know oh, yeah. and i i feel oh, like she knew yeah. what was coming yeah bring the yeah. guard <laughs> well that's why yeah, that's why she should, that's why she showed up you know when she yeah. did she knew she, she knew, knew. She, michael couldn't be trusted and she showed up blasting too she, she the second the door opened she was firing a phaser and how heartless you got to be to kill your friends just yeah. so you can do a coup well, you're a, you're a Terran. I mean, that's, you know. The Terran universe, these friends, the definition of friendship is totally different. Well, yeah. the, the definition of friendship probably in Terran is transactional. What yeah. do you do for me? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. It, it's all about, you know, number one right there. Mm-hmm. If narcissists ruled the world, it'd be the mere universe. Oh, gee, well, we got, got one ruling right ours. Hey, you know, <laughs> Not for long. Thank God he doesn't have a phaser. <laughs> oh, you guys, to be careful on that part. We don't want people trying to figure out time travel on board the ship. Oh, there's geez. an iron fist and then there's death. <laughs> you know, it was definitely a good fight scene that happened. And But however, the next scene actually got me stand up to yell. So, but I'm not going to talk about that until we get there. <laughs> well, one last thing about this, about this scene was, you know, Giorgio's realization. It's like, once a traitor is always a traitor. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, I that's mean, the one thing that the, that's the fault of the mirror universe is the second you can't trust somebody. You can't trust them. You might as well just get rid of yeah. them because they're broken. They're done. Exactly. Well, she tried breaking her. She tried doing what she could to break her and it still didn't work. And she still did a coup. Yeah. When somebody's determined not to break, I mean, really determined not to break, you can't break them. There's, there's a phrase they have, and this is going to sound really gross, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, when the mafia decides they want to torture someone for information, they bring in who they call as a turkey doctor. The reason why they call them a turkey doctor is because after they finish torturing them, they basically are gobbling like a turkey. There's, there's nothing left. Mm. They're an expert in dissembling a body and keeping the person alive. So they would do things like remove the eyelids so you can never blink. They oh. do things like take off the limbs and saw all, them. All the worst and, torture things you can right. possibly think of, you don't right. want to think of. Starting right. with the digits. Right. And they start that until the person breaks. However, if someone's really determined not to break, there's nothing they can do about it. So, and that's a rare individual can do that. By then and, the individual is a potato person. Yes, because they refuse to give up. Speaking of torture, I was watching something. I don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember what show it was, but the person took the shotgun and shoved it up the guy's ass and then sat him down on it and blew his brains out. Dane, what show is that? I don't remember. But I was watching oh it yesterday. My I was God. like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's too quick. Um, and and <laughs> that that's too quick. The the Afghanistan women. Oh man! If you really piss them off, their idea of torture is that they will take a person, they will tie them down in the desert, and then they would take coals and they would start a fire on the abdomen and they would cook their meal as you roasted to death. Ew. Oh. Wow. So, Wouldn't that ruin the appetite because, you know, burnt hair? Well, it depends if they have a hairy gut. It depends on how much hair they got. Yeah, because otherwise yeah, it starts smelling like a nice barbecue. Well, that's a hot yeah. time in the old town tonight. Oh, <laughs> so basically, if the person is as much hair as Robin Williams has, think of a different torture. Yeah, thing. that's right. You get a haircut well, first. Well, you do they, that. Yeah, <laughs> they, they shave them first and then they do it. <laughs> so, okay. That's why it's better to have a big belly because uh, all the coals won't stay there. They'll just kind of roll off. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Nathan's safe then. Oh my God! You you need help. <laughs> I need Kelpian. What? You need you need help. Oh, okay, uh, we're not going to go down the torture route because I know far too many ways to do this. So, are we done you with need, this section? So, like, you keep talking. That's what well, one of them. I mean, they say torture is not an effective <laughs> method. And yes, there's Captain. a reason they say that. <laughs> we are done with this section. Do you want to move on? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Hack three, the doors. As Ooh, Giorgio, band. what? Riders on the storm. Yeah. Riders <laughs> on the storm. Into this world we're born. 
Ooh. <laughs> okay. As Giorgio dies, she simultaneously wakes up in the 32nd century with Carl and Michael. Confused, she demands to know who Carl is and what just happened. That's when Carl reveals that he is the guardian of forever. I <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Big moment. Nerd boner. <laughs> and even though she only passed out for a minute, she was sent back to the Terran Empire for three months in order to have her soul weighed and judged. She doesn't belong in the Terra universe anymore, and she doesn't belong in the future either. Carl will send her back to a time when the Prime and Mirror universe are aligned, so that way she can have a second chance and a new life. Michael and Giorgio say their goodbyes, and then she walks through the portal. That scene when he got up and he said that I, and they blended his voice with the original voice, I, I stood up uh-huh. and yelled. That was kind of yes. cool. It was like, that was what, even though last episode, or last show, Podcast, we surmise that he might be because we're talking about if he was Q or if he was mm-hmm. the Guardian. Yeah, and, and if mm-hmm. you looked at the newspaper, people were talking about that on Twitter, saying the newspaper was well, the, the same yeah, newspaper the from clue. the original. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, when that happened, that gave me chills. And then the uh, <laughs> yes. door breaks up, and then you see the gate, and it's like, oh my yeah, god, okay. this is the best thing in the world. It's the best moment. Yeah, that was really cool. But going back to what you were saying, Nathan. So last week I. I said that I thought Carl was a Q and I just want to say technically we weren't wrong about Carl being Q because yes, Carl is the guardian of forever. However, guardian of forever, however, that's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> um, however, in the book, the next generation Q continuum series during a flashback, a younger Q is interacting with the guardian of forever and it is hinted that the guardian of forever was built by the race that would eventually evolve into the Q. So technically is like Carl Carl is the de-evolved version of a Q. So he's like the uh, before Q. Q. Before Q. Yeah, he's yeah. like the redneck version of Q. He's like um. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his he's got his monster truck and he's got his G yeah yeah his, hands out the snow yeah and right. red coat. <laughs> he's like what we were to primates. He's like the, the Larry the Cable Guy of Q. There now, you go. If you want to know a little bit of backstory <laughs> on that, the reason why Carl was there and not where he was originally is due to the temporal wars. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they started using the Guardian of Forever to change timelines left and right. And he's like, you know what? I'm tired of people using me for this. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's like, I'm yeah. going underground because the hell with <laughs> <Yeah>. you people. <laughs> Done, uh, bitches. He didn't like becoming a portal of death. I thought yeah. that was kind of nice of him to say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to hide because this is not Just necessary. For rest- Prince. The Guardian of Forever was from Star Trek, the original series, season one, episode 28, City on the Edge of Forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. The most awarded Star Trek episode. Yeah. Was it was one of the best ones. Right. Which took place in 2267 and they portal to 1930. I think it's, it's New York or Chicago. Mm-hmm. It was 1930 New York. New York. Okay. Yeah. And jo- <laughs> Joan Collins was the guest star of that episode. Yeah. But it was it was really cool to see the Guardians of Forever basically turned around and and did a thing from like clerks it was like fuck you fuck you fuck you i fuck love you, cool. that <laughs> fuck you I'm that's out. my favorite part of the movie <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh. so it was it was pretty cool when he did that and Giorgio was like this was some sort of trickery and it's like check your badge thing yeah it was and real. Like, yeah. yeah, it was three months worth of, of data points. Of data. Yeah. yeah. So when that happens, when Carl said that, basically, this was real. She really did die in the mirror universe. She really did help Saru. And you could tell because Carl says Saru went on to help a lot of other people. Like you did a lot helping him and having him move on and doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that actually made a difference. And it was um, it caused ripples in the future. Ripples in time. It also proves the point that time is not linear it's fluid yeah yes but if you think about it Killy had a chance to kill the Kelpians when they did that so there had to be some sort of detente happened between the Kelpians and Killy mm. and some sort of changing of the maybe she just there. doesn't like the way they taste either but the Kelpians <laughs> too much cholesterol <laughs> right too stringy 
too stringy. Killy, Killy was, she was loyal to George O, and the Kelpians were fighting for George O, so, you know, maybe Killy was like, okay, you since you were fighting for the Emperor, you know, I won't eat you. It, maybe. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Did you guys notice that when, at the very end, when she was dying, and her and Saru were talking, she called him Saru, and I really wish they would have had him, like, sort of done something with his face, where he sort of recognized that slip or something, like, he already knows she's from a different time and universe. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and then she called him Saru. Well, the credits, if you, if you watch um, the closed captioning, they had him listed as Saru when whenever he spoke. Oh, was his name Saru? Yeah. In in the Empire? Yeah. At the very end there, it's, it's, when he spoke, his, his title was Saru. Oh. So it's going to definitely be interesting to see if we revisit the Mirror Universe later and see the ramifications of what they did. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see where Carl sent her because I mean, he's not sending her back to the Terran Empire, but he's sending her back to a time when the Mirror and the Terran Empire universes are closer together. So well, Section I, 31. Yeah, I think that's going to be <laughs> Section because now she's more equipped to realize that she has uh, morals now. Well, she got weighed and she measured out OK in the end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's more equipped. She brought the uh, bracelet with her. So she brought 3189 technology to the 22nd century. Are they going to use that for like some kind of technological advancement? She brought her bracelet with her. Well, it's oh, possible. Well, fancy. the portal might have stripped her of that. We don't know. You know, it, it stripped it her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the way the, the next show for her start. She's going to be naked. And <laughs> There's a pole in, front of a in the pole. middle yeah. of it. And she's like dancing like around Arnold the pole. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator. There you go. There you go. Like Arnold in Terminator. Yeah. There's going to be a starship and all of a sudden you're going to hear Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> George O beams into the sh- into the bridge and she's too butt naked. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's funny. That'd be a good way to start a show. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> You don't have to um, go full frontal. You could put like a command chair in the right way, frontal. in the right place. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> it's like your face and your uniform. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys read the newsletter, the newspaper that Carl had, the headlines on there? All I saw I was the headline. The where was her it? Cert, her, she was uncertain. Her light. Her yeah, hate was that uncertain. was the big one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. two small ones was um the starship USS Genelin reported to be missing, and then a supernova threatens the Tacon Empire. So the first one, the starship USS Genolin reported missing. That is the same ship from the Next Generation episode Relics. And in that episode, Scotty was thought, uh, was brought to the 24th oh. century after like soaring himself in the transporter for 70 years. That's the mm. USS Genolin. So that just went missing. And then the other one, the supernova threatens the Tacon Empire. Reference to the Next Generation, the last outpost. And in that episode, the Tacon Empire was was destroyed for 600,000 years and they also had the ability to move between like planets and stars. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting things are afoot in that newspaper. Yeah, I tried to see the smaller ones but my my eyesight really sucks and I was just happy I saw that. It was definitely interesting previews and again, you know how the the writers are, they give us little little breadcrumbs. Mhm. And can we jump back onto the ship for a minute because <laughs> Jet Reno's back! Stop stealing yeah. my power supply. Jet! I love Jet. I missed her. She was gone for way too long. No food in the science lab. She, this is not food. This is this is candy. It's, it's completely it's, different. It's like an I, accessory. Yeah. I love it when book at book says you can just say thank you and just like uh, biologically impossible. <laughs> if he tried, you tried his DNA would you. unravel like a hormonal teenager. Yeah. Oh my uh, god, I yeah, love that. They brought funny. her back just to say that line. We need more. More jet. <laughs> I, we totally I, need more I don't jet. even think she had a scene with the emperor at all. But no. uh, she, at the, oh, I guess that's in the next section, isn't it? Where they start talking about her. Yeah, that's the next section. Yeah. She had a good line in that. <laughs> So also, too, when Book comes in here and he's like, I read the film manual and then yeah. it got interesting. So I moved on to the technical manual to see what happened next. I yeah. was like, oh, my God, I love that the, so the, much. The tech manual's got all the juicy stuff. But if you, you know, you get through the field manual, you just kind of get the gist of everything. But you really want the details right to the tech manual. That's an engineer right there. Yeah. And he must be able to read pretty fast if he gotten through both of those. Well, you know, in like what, Speed a day or two? They had it in the audio version. <laughs> yeah, he, he did it at half speed. Forward, he, like, he, 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 his, <laughs> he, his forehead lit up and he could read quicker. 
<laughs> well, you know, he had to make himself useful, so you know. No. So he brings he brings in um, the Emerald Chain technology yeah. mm-hmm. to boost the sub. Who knew you could boost subspace signals? You could boost subspace. anything. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. It's carriers. Hilarious. Yeah. The carriers would need that. The little goodbye salute before yes. she steps through the guardian. Um, yep. she, that was touching. She's got the live and long the and tear. prosper, and yeah. then the Terran little fist bump the thing. Vulcan salute, the Terran thing. I yeah. love that. And the conversation between them was just like, oh, I mean, she's like, you are my Philippa. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not oh, crying. I was You're totally crying. crying. <laughs> oh my god, I was totally bawling. What, what I feel for you belongs to you. That was so beautiful. Yeah. I didn't lose that part. The part that got me that touched me when she turned around and looked at Carl and said, can she come with me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> you, you realize just how much Michael means to her when, when, you know, when she says that. It's like, you know. That's a hard day for Giorgio to have to go through because she lost her daughter twice in one day. It's hard enough yeah. when you lose your daughter, but to lose like your daughter twice, you know, she killed well, her three times now, actually. Three times now. Well, in the yeah, days, totally. like not just a day, it's a three month day. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was very clutch the pearls. Got a lot of feelings. Yeah, it was. That moment, they've come so far. In a way, it's full circle because the discovery started with her and Giorgio in the middle of a desolate area. Mm -hmm. And now it ends with them in a desolate area. And that was so cool. Did you guys see the ready room where he was saying that they weren't expecting that snow? Like that snow (laughs) wasn't supposed to be there. That's surprise snow. That's hilarious because (laughs) if you're a production person, if you've done on location shooting before, the one thing nobody has control of is the fucking weather. (laughs) And you go and you spend all that time scouting a location. You think you have the perfect location and then snow covers the entire freaking thing. Yeah, it's just amazing. I I don't think it could have been any more perfect, though. I love what they did. Yeah, they just went with it. Yeah, the contrast between the snow and when we first see Michael and Burnham, I mean, Michael and Giorgio in the desert. Yeah. The completely polar opposite landscapes. Mirror universe type. Yeah, the symmetry between it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. It worked out really well. Like sometimes you get happy accidents that happen during the film. Like you. There was a film I remember seeing one time, You Need to Hush. um, (laughs) There was a scene that I saw. I went to see an independent film once and it was a woman who was trying to decide whether or not she should go with a girl she fell in love with or she should stay with the man she was supposed to marry. And she's sitting on her windowsill and as she decides that she's going to be with the girl, a whole bunch of pigeons, birds flew up into the sky. And I thought that was really kind of cool, you know. So at the end of the movie, they had the director, the writer, the producers all asking questions, you know, taking questions. So I said, that was a nice scene. Was the all the birds taking off to the sky like that? Was that like a symbolic for her spirit being lifted because now her mind was clear? And she looked at me and went, no, that just happened. <laughs> the birds just happened to take off on their own like that. Yep. Oh, just, wow. We just caught her in the film. Happy and accidents. Went, Wow. So it shows us sometimes we get symbolism from stuff that the writers had no friggin' idea or clue that was going to be there. <laughs> and it's that kind of stuff that makes it so freaking good. And the writer was like, I had no idea that was going to happen. Sometimes you're shooting something and you're just you're trying to just keep the person in the frame of the shot. You're not even paying attention to what's behind them. And then you see it afterward and like, wow, it was an amazing job. You put that in the background. Like, I had no fucking clue that was there. And, you know, those <laughs> make the best memes when people don't look in the background background or don't see oh, how the usually that's what happens angled. is like got some idiot you know make it a sign or whatever in the background or waving at you or something yeah i saw this one twitter picture of this girl taking a picture on a bridge and you look down and it's a whole boat of guys looking up at her <laughs> dress she was wearing a short dress and that's they were awesome. all looking up at it it was so awesome that's a good photo bomb <laughs> i love that that's actually funny <laughs> wow I guess now we can satisfactorily go to the next section. (laughs) Okay, moving on. Act four, deceased. Saru and Book are giving the Admiral an update when they get word that Michael is coming back alone. After telling Saru what happened, they decide that Giorgio is officially deceased and they will have a funeral party for her. We end the show sobbing with the crew's kind yet hilarious remembrances. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Uh, When Michael finally, you know, has her little say, it was very emotional she's like a mother almost she's like a sister almost she's like she was an 
unexpected gift. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it was, that was a beautiful scene. I wonder how many takes it took to get some of those things out because they were so nice. She was a pain in the ass. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it meant more to me than I either. could ever put into words. <laughs> I love Saru's quote where he uh, he said her barbs, however piercing, were utterly glorious. Mm. Yes. Love that. Yeah, love I'm it. glad someone uh, registered that sister. Because <laughs> 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 that was two snaps up in a backspace. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, backspace. That was, it was, and you can see that the crew was genuinely felt because that was her last day on set. It, she was done with Discovery and like she said in the after show it, it became like family and to see her character her as a person to be exactly opposite the way Giorgio was because she was infused and you know excited everything it was it was cool yeah it was, it was so sad nice. yeah it was I'm so glad that we are getting a whole new Star Trek show with just her because otherwise I would be completely devastated oh yeah Olivia is like you bet what you're writing her off forever what the no. fuck's wrong with you people? Yeah. She's like the I, list character. Oh, well, I'm, let's let's see what happens too, because although all those people died in, in the, the quick mirror Terran universe that we saw when she walked through the door, maybe Carl has sent her back to a time when a lot of those characters like Landry maybe is still alive and that they'll, they'll be able to bring, you know. I don't know. I think they might send her back to like the next generation, like a hundred or two hundred years like later after when Discovery, you know. I don't think they'll send her back to twenty two fifty. 55, I think they'll send her back to 2364. It'd be interesting to see where she ends up. Either TNG, the Picard era. It Deep Space really, Nine, Voyager. Yeah. And if they will do this, I guarantee wherever they land her, they could possibly even bring back Worf. They could mm-hmm. bring back Garrett. You know, That's what I'm hoping for. And, I, and finally make him a captain after he's been instant for like, however, for how long? <laughs> for instant Kim, make him finally a captain. Kim. <laughs> that could be interesting. Yeah. You know, so it'd be really, oh my God, could you imagine if Captain Kim is <laughs> Section 31 and Giorgio's on his ship? <laughs> Whoa. What would be even sadder is if he still ends in Kim. This is that <laughs> so much fun imagining things, though. That's amazing. He transferred to Section 31, hoping he'd finally get that raise. And he's still an ensign. <laughs> and he's still an ensign. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, wait, could you tell us how the fuck did you become a gray-haired ensign? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and then Giorgio meets him, and he, she's like, well, let me tell you about Tilly. Let me tell you about Ensign Tilly. Oh, my God. He would lose it. <laughs> he would lose his shit. Ensign Tilly, Ensign Tilly, Captain Killy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Exactly. <laughs> Harry's got to get some relief somewhere in the Star Trek canon someday. (laughs) This is true. Every time he had somebody he wanted to be a girlfriend, someone snatched it away from him. Mm -hmm. Poor guy could get no love through the whole series. Well, no love, no love. No, even what's his face? Um, Chakotay got blue balls. Nobody (laughs) in the series really had anything happen for them. The doctor even got more anxious than than Seriously. Balana and Tom got some nookie nookie. Yeah, and a kid from it. Uh huh. So it was like, wow. A little kid that they glued smuts on her head so that she was part <laughs> Leon and part Portugal. But it's still, it was, it was, well, okay. We can go down a totally different rabbit This is hole. a different show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this, is anybody got anything to tie up? Yeah, um, I just want to say Jet's Remembrance real quick. Yeah. And I think Rocky was going to say something about that. So I was sort of waiting for. She had no tact. God, I love that about her. I oh, mm-hmm. love that quote. Yeah, that was so cool. I I mean, and I don't think, did they even share screen time together? But they were, I mean, they would be two awesome characters. If they did, it was like a group thing where everyone yeah. in the group was together. Yeah, like I a group meeting any. kind of thing. Maybe yeah, like one of the, when they had the, the big discussion around the table that one time when they were talking it about was a, stuff. It was yeah. holiday group sex. <laughs> No, I don't. Okay, any any of you listeners, if you remember a point in time where Jet and Giorgio had screen time alone, could you send a wave to us so we know? <laughs> screen time alone. That sounds like another show. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> that sounds like fan fiction, sir. No, that woo, totally woo. Sounds, sounds like our show. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fleet underground after dark. Yeah. <laughs> we are after dark all the time. What are you talking about? All the time, but yeah. it's fun. About you, we, we, would have to, we would have to name that when Starfleet X-rated. <laughs> You know what? When we created this podcast, we had no clue we were going to be this sexual. Otherwise, that might have been one of the name suggestions. Yeah, if only I knew then what we knew now. Starfleet (laughs) Undersex. Starfleet After Dark. Starfleet Blue Balls.
one quick little thing to tie up the end of the show. We had the little discussion about when Saru was talking with the Admiral, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the whole, uh, you know, you could compromise uh, Discovery Systems by using that Emerald Chain tech and you can, uh, you know, Osiris desperate for dilithium and yeah. Spore Drive on Discovery. Not a good combination in that situation. So they're talking about stuff that's coming up. You got a point there. Yeah. And this the preview of next week's episode, what the, that was like, there was some stuff going on, man. I only saw the preview for the after show. I didn't see the preview where it was on Discovery. The big thing that I wrote down was like, there's a life sign on that ship. The ship that's yeah. supposed to not have anything there. In that, the one in the Viridian system. Yeah, the one that's the been Viridian broadcasting cluster. Kelpian porn for the last 400 years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if uh, Saru's going to get some with his Kelpian. <laughs> And so did the Admiral, because Admiral's like, uh, were you a little distracted? You know, I wouldn't blame you, but you just got to tell me, man. I think I misquoted there. I I don't think it's the Viridian system. It's the... um yeah, I know which one you're talking about, though. I mean, it's, it's the, the one where the, ver- something nev- where the, the Kiev ver- is stuck in the middle of. Yeah, the ver- the Verdun, Verdun. There's Verdun? a ver sound in there someplace. Oh, Verub- oh. Verubian Nebula. That's it. Not oh, the Verubian. The Verubian Nebula. Big difference. I yes. take in too much pleasure out of you mispronouncing that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mispronounce it. I just used the wrong, the wrong thing. term. It seems no, I not. almost feel like I I feel like I should have a cigarette after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one that butchers words. <laughs> that's that's what I love about this show is nobody pronounces anything correctly. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. And it's like, what's his name? What's that dude's name? Oh, yeah, the guy with going... the, the thing on his face, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's what's his face. <laughs> it's <Ilk. laughs> It's what's his face. His name is Ill. Why do we have a Jaffa on, on Discovery? <laughs> Why are we talking about Stargate all of a sudden? Yeah. <laughs> I've been rewatching Stargate SG1 from the oh, beginning. Oh, God. So. I can't wait to start. I, I got to do that one of these days and start I still rewatching have to it watch again. that. Oh, I'd love to it's watch really that with you. Good. That was so much fun, that show. It's mm-hmm. really good. And, and the movie's good. good, too. I mean, I love the movie, yeah, the movie. so much. Okay. Yeah. That's the next thing I'm going to binge watch. Yeah, the movie was yeah when i watched the movie when a certain scene came up i stood up in shock and so did don't people tell me i haven't me. seen it that's why i didn't say what happened then thank the you people behind me are like sit down <laughs> i'd like to, i'd like to make a suggestion if you can watch the 4400 okay the 4400 was also good yeah i just finished all four seasons it's about a group of people 4400 people who are returned to the state of washington in a ball of light they were taken at different points in history over 50 years uh-huh. and some of them have come back with power Hours. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Renee Echeverria was one of the producers. And it was um, Ira Stephen Bear was one of the um, okay. producers as well. But what makes this show interesting, you get a chance to see there are actors in there now who are famous that weren't when the show came on. Oh, that'd yeah. be cool. Jeffrey Coombs is one of the uh, main. Oh, really? And yeah. Summer is in oh, it too. Summer Glau. Yeah. He is such a good Summer actor. Summer Glau's Jeffrey. Oh, goodness. Yep. And so Summer, Summer Glau and too. Jeffrey Coombs are um, a couple in this. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it, it was a good series. Now, to let you guys know, we just don't talk about Star Trek. We give you <laughs> other stuff to watch. <laughs> so you have other things to watch. Chances are we won't talk about it on the show. But then again, we might. So and the stand, the stand is on CBS All Access right now. So, the first yes, episode and, of The Stand. <laughs> and you get a chance to see Whoopi come through a cornfield. So it's you guys. Mother Abigail. There's a lot of stuff to watch. Thank you for joining us. It's Our time is now coming to a close where we're going to steal off the transmission. Make sure you have a really good holiday, you guys. If you need to do Christmas shopping, your only hope now is Amazon. Do it online. Is do it online, Amazon. And one click and it's gift wrapped. And you can send it during the prime delivery and they'll probably get it just in time for the holiday. Holidays. And our address is yeah <laughs> yes we also graciously accept gifts all kinds of HR doesn't mind that so if you want to send something to Heather send us an email and we'll get as a long box as it's appropriate you. there's some things I don't want you sending me yeah, yeah no, no 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 naked selfies oh I no, get those already no yeah <laughs> she gets them for free so don't send them anymore so you don't have to worry about it you know oh one last one last um, suggestion before we go on a series to watch is um, Steven Spielberg's Taken. It was the first time I saw Dakota Fanning in anything. And I was like, this chick is going to fucking rule. 
she because she was so good at it. And, and I just bought the DVD. So yeah, listen to you sounding all excited. Ain't that cute? It was so good, though. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, there's some shows that, you know, you watch and you're just like, they leave an impression. Taken did that. The 4400 did that. You know, Star Trek obviously does that. I thought you Patrick know. only got this excited on date night. Yeah, so did I. Apparently, but I don't have any date night anymore, life so. that we're going to. Movie night. Wait, wait eight, did Movie you night. piss off HR? <laughs> <laughs> Those are booty calls. It's a di- it's a different thing. It's not a date. Totally different. Those are quick one and done. I and you're, you're going to say something else. No one, no one's buying anyone dinner. dinner. It, was a, it was a okay. <laughs> something wasn't eaten, but it wasn't dinner. You, it was a dick night. <laughs> Is that what you were thinking? I was going to say it was a dick night. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was dinner. You were having salad being tossed. I have no idea. Oh, they're serving salad. Okay. With ranch dressing. <laughs> Ill. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Please, please, please remember, just don't have a great, safe Christmas holiday, but make it so. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.